Hi, everybody, and welcome to Beyond Food Market podcast number 37. Let's get to it. So this is Beyond Food Market. This is my podcast where I podcast the journey of me trying to start a company from an idea. I'm currently sleeping on my mother's couch, about $75,000 in debt, and I just have an idea. So let's get started. I guess right now for all the new podcast listeners, let me tell you what it is. About three years ago, September 2017, I quit my job. I was working at a local gym called LA Fitness. I quit my job to chase a dream. I had an idea for a product. I quit my job November. In January 1st, I joined the Polsky Center. It's an incubator in Chicago. It's one of the top incubators in America. And while I was there, another idea for a solution to food desert, which I had saw in 60 Minutes about a year before that. And so I told my idea to one of the mentors at the Rostandi Center. Now the Rostandi Center is an organization attached to the Booth Business School and is for social entrepreneurship. So it's for entrepreneurship for social causes. So I met with them. I said, you know, this is my idea. What do you think? He's like, hmm, it has some legs. I, I think it's interesting. He said, tomorrow I'll meet with my other mentor. So I met with him and then I told him my idea. He's like, wow, it's interesting. And then he's, I think it has some legs. I think it has potential. So I eventually met with a whole bunch of other mentors, probably like 10 mentors in all. So it started from like the idea of me saying, hey, I want to bring food into food desert. We're opening up a, a store with plant-based food. That's where it started. And then I just met more mentors and they're like, maybe you should have a presentation. So then I got made a presentation. And then I started telling people and they're like, yeah, you know, they've been selling food in vending machines. And I was like, yeah, I, I started doing more research on vending machine. I met with mentors for like two, three months and then eventually got to a point where they're like, OK, Jose, I think it's time for you to go into the neighborhood, go start talking to people. And then I went to the neighborhood in September 2018. I went to the neighborhoods, came across Operation Hope, which is a business organization in Inglewood. I took a 12 week business course there. Learn about business planning, just a lot of just a lot of like intricate stuff. It's a lot of stuff. And from that point, I started meeting with a lot of the people that took the class as well. And every time we ended the class or we had a presentation, they're like, Jose, I really like your idea. I think this neighborhood, these areas need it. And I was like, all right, cool. So that was November 2018. I graduated. Then January, so basically a year from the time I quit my job to actually thinking to myself, you know what? I think I'm gonna switch from my product idea and just go full time on Beyond Food Market on my idea to bring food into food desert because of the people in these communities said that. It was like feedback straight from the freaking source. Like that's, like you can't, I was at ground zero, like in the actual neighborhood with entrepreneurs, other entrepreneurs. And they were telling me that this neighborhood needs it, that these people will need it. You know, people were stopping me after class. It was interesting. So I was like, all right, cool. So that's really, honestly, that's that's probably the only reason I'm continued. Probably the only reason, because because otherwise I'd be really blind because I wouldn't have had any feedback. So it's kind of cool that I got into the neighborhood. So that's that's good. That kind of helped me, the, again, those mentors, every mentor I met at Rostandi, appreciate everybody, you guys, if you're seeing this now, thank you. No matter who I met, I took something from them. They gave me something and I took it and I used it. So. That's what Beyond Food Market is right now. It's an idea. 2018, I um, graduated from Operation Hope, and then it was January 2019. So now it's January 2019, and I'm like, okay, what, what, whoa, 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 I forgot to tell you. So I graduated Operation Hope in November, and that was one of my first TikTok, first YouTube videos. It's one of these first videos right here. If you look right now, it's one of the first videos. So in actuality, the whole process from the time I spoke the idea to my first video was probably, I spoke to somebody in about, maybe now, maybe in June, maybe July. Dude, July, dude, it's three, July, August, September. Wow, it's literally been three years. July, 2018, 19, 20, 21. We hit the three year mark on the time I spoke this idea. When I first spoke the idea to the first mentor. Now I had saw something on 60 Minutes. I don't know when that aired, but when it aired, I thought it was kind of messed up. So then I was like thinking about like, that'd be kind of cool if I could solve it because I always liked solving puzzles and things like that when I was younger. And so I kind of took that upon myself and I just kept it in the back of my head. And then when I started going to Rostandi, I mean, it's the Polsky Center, I would pass by 55th Street or 63rd Street straight into Hyde Park. And I would just see these neighborhoods and then my mind just started working again. And then that's when I pitched the idea, summer 2018, three years ago. That's how it started. So we probably missed about July, August, September, November, October, November, four months. And for those four months, that was me actually doing the actual process of telling my idea to do the mentor. Then eventually developed to 
meeting 10 mentors. So that's what it would have been the four months of me meeting mentors and me thinking, how can I elevate this idea? How can I move forward with it? Like, oh, this mentor told me to get a, a displays. So I had to get like big ass displays. I don't even know if I still have them. Um, I gotta look for those, that'd be cool. So now you guys are all caught up. It's an idea to bring food into food deserts using our patent pending cash vending box. So let's talk about the three years really quick. This is uh, podcast number 36. I think we have to. The first year, January 1st till, I don't even know. Yeah, I was at, I left the Polsky Center. So I started working on the idea in November, 2000, September 2018. I started working on this idea September 2018. And then it took me a year to develop to, then I started developing the idea. So from that point on, I had pitched it. That was when I, f I first started. In 2000, November, like November, like September 2018, I was like kind of like developing an idea of what it was, doing my um, pitch deck. It took another year because I, I went to DePaul University's purpose pitch competition, pitched my idea, and basically it was just a wreck. I didn't know how to present my idea yet. I mean, it was just like a wreck. So needless to say, I wasn't chosen. On the ride home, that's when I was like, okay, what is my differentiator? What makes us different? So once I realized what made us different was our vending box i was like okay i'm like you know what maybe i should get some some ip on it so i was like okay let's do some ip on it let's get a patent so then i just started developing a patent i started developing on a patent started working on it at DePaul university at their library because i'm an alumni there I graduated in 2004 with a degree in computer graphics and animation so i was alumni there so i was able to go there use the facilities do my patent research do the patent application submit the patent patent and that is actually, this process, I, I, it's all recorded now. So from November, 2018, I started recording everything. Not every, everything. I haven't posted everything because I have so much content. I didn't know how to, first, when I first got started, I didn't know how to post produce. And it was just a mess. It was so hard. Like I was pushing out like a video every day, maybe a video every two days. Now I'm pushing out like eight videos a day, 10 videos, 10, 20, 30 posts a day. Maybe not 30. Maybe like two on Twitter, two on LinkedIn, two on Facebook, two on Instagram. I don't know, like a 10. I'm maybe like 20, 20 posts a day on all my platforms. So we are now, I don't even know where we're at, but uh, that's it. So you guys are all caught up. Let's get to it. Let's get to the podcast. So last week we had our first guest. Pacific Northwest, she's one of my TikTok followers. I talked about how I wanted to share my story about gluten, how it just changed my life, how one day I hope to have somebody like share their experience. And she's like, I'd do it. And I was like, all right, bet. So she did a podcast. That was our previous podcast. You can check it out. She shared her experience, how she got gluten sense uh, celiac disease at age 21. And she's been gluten free since then and had changed her whole life. Check it out. What's interesting about that is I had talked on one of my very first podcasts how I wanted to one day have somebody come and share their story. And it happened last week. So that's the, um, this probably on our first, one of our first podcasts. I don't even know when I first heard podcasting, maybe a year ago, year and a half ago, two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. It's been 36 weeks, so at least a year ago. So about a year ago, I've been thinking about this. So that's interesting that it happened. So I'm excited about that. All right, so check out the podcast. Let's move on to the next. I wrote down kind of some sheets because I'm trying to get more organized. So recently, I've been really focusing on TikTok followers. I was always thinking about follower, follower count, follower count. I'm like, I'm at 100,000. I'm losing followers. I'm losing followers. Oh my God. And just getting nervous because because I wanted to keep... because. In this realm of social media, it's all about follower count. So I was always like, follower count, follower count. Okay, we're at 100, we're at 110. I'm like, I'm losing followers. I'm losing, followers. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, so I was freaking out. And David Meltzer, one of my mentors that I listened to, he had posted something on his LinkedIn account and it kind of made me tear up. And he was just like, it's not about how many people are there. It's I'm just here to share my message. Basically was the gist of it. And I said, it's kind of like, it's kind of hard for me because sometimes I lose track of the actual people. There's actual people behind these accounts, the actual people that literally follow me. And I forget that I lose track of that because I just see a number. And I said, I, I do that. And he responded, he's like, 
Jose, um, <clears throat> you have to not attach an emotion to an outcome. And I was like, fuck. I had heard him say that before and it kind of made, I was like, all right, yeah. So, so then what I did is I, I changed our intention. I was like, okay, let's change the whole intention, Jose. Let's fucking change it up. So I changed the intention from wanting the big number to raise awareness to saying, I don't give a fuck how many people are following me. I'm going to just bring whoever's their value. That was my intention. I put I started putting out videos. One of the videos that I put out got over 500,000 views. We literally have gained about 20,000 followers from that. It's just been growing. And that's just from shifting our intention from like that law of attraction thing. You know, like I wanted this, which meant I didn't have it. Now that I shifted away from that, I shifted to like, I don't care what is here. I'm going to bring this people value. So that's, that's my intention. I focused on it and it just changed. So, uh, that was interesting how, you know, how it just, how it works like that. It blows my mind. So that's what we're doing. We're just going to constantly focus on that. We're going to shift away from thinking about follower count, thinking about how it's all about follower count. Yeah, we got 130,000 followers. That's great. You know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm going to, I'm going to take this brief moment, be grateful for it and uh, move forward. Just keep bringing, bringing value. Cause like, that's all I got to do. I listened to my other mentor, Gary Vaynerchuk. All he says is bring value, bring value, bring value, bring value. So post content, content, content. That's all he says. Content, content. What's, how can you solve any issue? Content. How do you fix it? More content. How can you get better? More content, more, more content. So that's all I keep doing. So, oh, also our audience, because of that TikTok video, which was more Mexican based, a couple of our videos before that were talking about being vegan and Mexican. And because of that, I feel like I got a big following of a Latino base now, like literally like, like the whole base of my last 20,000, I would have to say, if I took a guess, I would say at least 60, 70% Mexican, Latino or minority. That's how I really feel like in my heart. Again, I have to, I would have to look at every analytical number, but fuck it. Because I get a lot of people remarking, even some people commenting in Spanish, even some of my live video people come on are now speaking Spanish to me. So it's interesting. So it's very interesting how shifting the fo focus did that. All right. So documenting. Okay. Documenting. I don't know what that was about, but I think document just means me documenting the journey. I'm trying to get better at documenting it. So also I applied for a, um, some type of grant for minorities, Latinx. And I applied for this program for black and minority entrepreneurs and I applied for it. So it was, it was late, but I found it on one of my LinkedIn posts, one of my DePaul people that I follow, she posted it. So I did that. Who knows what happened, but I did that. Oh, and it's for money because I want to get the money. I'm going to make the prototype. I had the vision of the prototype. So I've got the idea for the prototype and I want to make it, I'm going to make it look cool. So on my TikTok, I did a 30 day challenge. I did push-ups and sit-ups for 30 days, lost five pounds, ate better, plant-based and gluten-free. So I did that in, in one, in one month, I lost five pounds, did push-ups and sit-ups for 30 days. And I feel great. I feel lighter and everything. So that's really so good because I got to share that on my TikTok so people can actually watch me lose the weight, which is so exciting. I feel so great. I mean, I really feel like I really, I still got a little bit left to go, but I feel great. So our Instagram has grown. Instagram has grown. What's the next subject? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about what's happening on my other platforms. So our LinkedIn's still kind of slow. I just got to get better at it. You know, I keep talking about trying to get better about like posting interesting shit like if you're a CEO, why well, you should be drinking this smoothie every morning, you know, shit like that. You know, I got to do it, but, but it's like my ADHD and me just be trying to like, like all over the place. That's why I'm trying to get more organized so I can actually make these videos so I can make these certain videos. So I can be like, if, are you a CEO, you know, shit like that. Like if you're a CEO, why you need this in your life. If you're a CEO who exercises, why this should be your top three exercises. You know, I gotta, I gotta just talk like that. So we'll be working on that too. Maybe, maybe one day I'll get there. So our discord has grown guys. Our discord has grown. My niece helped me set that up a few months ago and it is, man, my discord channel, 
looks premium, bro. Like premium, like legit. Looks straight up premium. I haven't seen a lot of other discords, but I've seen some of the discords that my niece follows and I've seen Gary Vaynerchuk's discord and mine looks pretty decent, bro. Really decent. Looks super clean. I like it. I like it. So the Discord's growing. We've got over 130 followers, 130 community members on the Discord. That's basically a private network. That's a private channel for a private organization that I've grown to 130 followers in, in I don't know how long, but uh, that's one of my biggest flexes I got on Discord before Gary. But I'm sure he was talking, I'm sure he was thinking about Discord for a while. I got on Discord because my niece's my nieces they always they're on discord and gary vaynerchuk he's always talking about you got to go where the young audience is and i was like all right so i started seeing my niece i'm like i gotta get on discord because i started seeing how she was doing this and somehow some of the TikTok people jumped off a of, off a of TikTok and popped on discord youtube and i'm like that's what i need to do too so that's what got me on discord because i wanted to take my TikTok to discord to youtube just start growing it's 2020, everything, that's how you do it now. That's what the focus is, we're on Discord, it's growing. Instagram is growing, we got about, we're almost nearing a, a 1K followers on Instagram. So very excited. A lot of our followers came when I had posted that stuff on TikTok, it popped a little bit. Also, I'm doing a lot more reels, not a lot more, just like past three out of the five posts have been reels. Yeah, so all the other platforms are doing well. Not well, I've got really no, nothing on anything. My Twitter is probably about 160. Instagram is about 1,000. TikTok's over 133. Discord's uh, 130. But again, guys, again, I gotta stop thinking about the numbers. It's not about the numbers. It's not. I've gotta stop thinking like that. It's about bringing value to whoever's watching. And sleep. Let's talk about sleep. Guys, I have been like, for the past month, I've been getting much sleep. I got glutened last week. I was cleaning out some lentils. I found a couple wheat kernels. Thought I could really wash off the wheat dust from the lentils. I was mistaken. I got glutened, not to the extreme as I usually do, but it was probably like, uh, like if I had to put it on a scale of a percentage wise, I would say maybe it was like 25% effect of like a full blown gluten attack. So it was interesting because I just got a headache for like five days. I mean, I still have a little bit one right now. I, I was tired. I would, I would be able to work out though and not be too tired. So um, I'm still a little tired today. I slept because I come home and just pass out because it's the, the gluten makes you pass out. So I feel like I'll be over this in like a month which is good, which usually is, would be two months. So that's, that's interesting how, uh, that's another thing I'm learning, just learning about cross-contamination. It's another thing, even though I thought I learned it all about this, you can't let gluten touch anything of yours. And you know why guys, you know why gluten messes me up? Because gluten has this protein. Gluten, gluten is a protein, right? It's found in cereal grains and stuff and, and proteins are used for, for building blocks. You know, we eat them, we break them down, break it into aminos. And so there's this protein called gluten that is made up of two molecules, two protein groups, if you will, glutenin and glidian. Now this glidian protein, no human on the fucking planet can break down. We don't have the enzymes to break it down to be used for the human body. We don't. So that's what always got me sick. So that is what is affecting me right now. But I feel like I'll, honestly, I feel like I'll be done with this in a month and I feel good already. I feel good about, it's been a week. It's been one week today. Yesterday has been a week. So it's like nine days and it's like eight days. So it's kind of going away. So I probably like maybe in about two weeks, I'll be feeling a lot better. And in a month I should be, I should be good. So I'm very excited for another month. Okay, so the people that keep me going on this are two of my mentors, David Goggins and Jacko Willink. Every time I'm tired, because I'm tired from gluten, I hear Jacko Willink say, you don't feel like going on, a, you know what I do when I don't feel like going on a run? I go on a run. You know what I feel, feel like doing when I don't feel like getting up? I get up. 
So you know when I don't feel like going on a run, you know what I do? I go on a run. So those two guys, if you want to follow some people that'll give you some, some hype, David Goggins and Jack Willink. And I'm going to keep posting and keep on posting and keep on posting. And that's my goal. Just keep posting to bring awareness. And guys, if you, anybody here wants to share your story, your journey of gluten, what it did to your life, DM me on every platform. Instagram probably the best. And let me know if you want to do a podcast via Zoom. So that is our podcast for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And you guys have a great night. And I'm going to sleep. Peace and love. Oh my goodness, I'm so fucking tired.